Hey guys, Derek here from Modern Castle. Today, we're gonna show you what to look for and what makes the best robot vacuum and the best robot vacuums on the market based on four years of testing and 64 different models reviewed. With that said, let's go ahead and dive in. First up, we're going to discuss which features to look for in a robot vacuum. If you just wanna see our recommendations for the best robot vacuums, jump to the time code on screen now to skip ahead. There are three major factors that are critically important for any robot vacuum cleaner. Cleaning performance, navigational ability, and how easy the robot is to use. Let's start with cleaning performance. This one is pretty simple. How good of a job does the robot do at actually cleaning dirt and debris? With a robot vacuum, it not only needs to be good at removing debris, but it needs to be able to find and navigate to the debris. So cleaning performance really is a mix between raw cleaning power and navigation. To evaluate cleaning power, we test the robot vacuum against a mix of four debris types on three different floor types. The score for each vacuum is the percentage of total debris by weight removed by the vacuum. Some robots also double as a mop. In those cases, we also test the mopping ability. The next major performance factor that's important is navigational ability. A good robot vacuum needs to be able to navigate around the home, find and remove debris, avoid getting stuck, and return to its docking station when finished. To test navigational ability, we let the robots navigate my home and lab. Ultimately, it comes down to one big question. Did the robot vacuum navigate the entire space without getting stuck, without needing human help, and get back to the dock? If the answer is yes, then in most cases we can say that the robot has excellent navigation. The spaces we test aren't exactly complex, but they aren't simple. We intentionally leave obstacles to see how the robots are able to deal with them, including low furniture, bar stool legs, scales, shoes, cords, and other common obstacles. The last important performance area is ease of use. It's a simple enough question, but also one that's fairly broad. There are a litany of different features, hardware, and software that help to make a robot easier to use. The most common factors that can improve usability that we look for are self-empty dustbin, robust, intuitive, and well-developed smartphone app, advanced navigation, and advanced digital mapping. A robot vacuum that's able to combine excellent performance and effective navigation in an easy to use package is the ultimate experience. Those are the types of robots that made our list for this video. Next up, we're gonna do a deep dive into our specific model recommendations. We'll break these down in a few different category groupings. However, please note that there is a good degree of overlap between the categories. First, the best overall robot vacuum is the Roomba S9 Plus. The S9 Plus is an absolute powerhouse when it comes to raw cleaning power and checks almost every other box we look for. In terms of cleaning, it was essentially perfect, removing an average of 99% of all debris by weight across all three floor types. The dual counter-rotating rubberized brush rolls cannot be understated. Over the last four years, we've consistently seen strong performance from these types of brush rolls. Navigationally, it's a strong performer also. Once it has a good map built, it's able to easily find its way around your home. Using the app, you can label rooms, create no-go zones, set up scheduling, and adjust power settings. Additionally, the S9 Plus app interface is equipped with iRobot Genius, which creates automated cleaning and scheduling suggestions based on usage over time. Lastly, the S9 Plus comes with a self-empty base. This allows the robot to empty the onboard contents into a docking base. Ultimately, this allows the robots to be hands-off for weeks or months at a time, depending on your cleaning frequency. Our next pick is the Roborock S7. The S7 doesn't have quite the raw cleaning power of the Roomba S9+, Plus, but it's still well above average. In our test, it was able to remove 96.7% of all debris by weight. Where the S7 really excels is with its 2-in-1 design, navigational abilities, and excellent usability driven through its well-developed app. The S7 has a mopping attachment that includes a sizable 300 milliliter water tank and mopping pad with a sonic scrubber. The mopping pad can be raised or lowered when it encounters carpets or moppable hard surfaces. This is a unique feature that we've not seen anywhere else. The combination of 300 milliliter water tank, 470 milliliter dustbin, and 5200 milliamp hour battery results in a 3200 square foot vacuum cleaning area and a 2100 square foot coverage for mopping. Navigation is excellent due to an impressive sensor array that includes LiDAR. LiDAR is able to precisely map the floor plan, improving navigation, and dramatically enhancing the in-app experience. Lastly, the Roborock app itself is just about as good as it gets. It is absolutely packed with feature settings, scheduling, room labeling, and advanced no-go zones for vacuuming and mopping. 
both the Roborock S7 and Roomba S9 Plus are the clear best models on the market in my view. In the last four years, we've reviewed 64 different robot vacuums. Of those 64 models, these two models have become the primary robot vacuums I use to clean our studio lab and my home. Check the link in the description if you're interested in buying any of the products in today's video. Next, we have the robot with the best navigation. That award goes to the Roborock S6 Max V. The S6 Max V is the predecessor to the Roborock S7. As a result, it shares many similarities, including a three hour runtime, advanced app, LiDAR system, and overall form factor. The biggest difference makers are the dual front facing cameras and obstacle detection AI. This combination of hardware and software allows the S6 Max V to identify common obstacles and avoid them. Compared to the S7, the S6 Max V has a slightly smaller dustbin and mopping tank at 460 milliliters and 297 milliliters, respectively. The S6 Max V includes a mopping attachment with an electronic water valve for more precise water control, but the mop system doesn't scrub and it doesn't raise over carpets. Even so, we still found the mopping clean performance to be quite good. In addition, its vacuuming performance was marginally worse than the S7, removing 91.7% of debris by weight compared to the S7's 96.7%. Despite these factors, the S6 Max V is arguably the best navigating robot vacuum on the market. The combination of front facing cameras, obstacle AI, LiDAR, and a fantastic app bring together excellent navigational performance. While you do give up a few features, what you gain in terms of navigational power shouldn't be undervalued. For complicated floor plans, or if you are in the habit of leaving stuff around your home that a robot might get stuck on, the benefits of the S6 Max V will far outweigh its few limitations. Now let's jump over to the best robots with a self empty dustbin. Within the last couple of years, there have been a huge number of new models coming in the market with self empty bins. Many of these use similar self empty dustbin systems. Of the models we've tested with a self empty dustbin, most work pretty well. However, it's not enough to simply have a robot with a self empty dustbin. The robot still needs to have strong cleaning performance, navigational ability, and excellent user experience. When you account for those factors, the number of really good robots with a self empty dustbin are far lower. My top recommendations for the best robots with a self empty dustbin are the Roomba S9 Plus, Roomba i7 Plus, and Roomba i3 Plus. All three of these models are built on a foundation of excellent cleaning and navigational performance. They are all equipped with dual rubberized brush rolls, which yielded an average debris removal score of 99% by weight on all three models. The S9 Plus and i7 Plus have more advanced navigational features that feed into more advanced features in the iRobot Home app. Notably, the i3 Plus is more limited in these areas, but is also significantly less expensive. These models don't have all the bells and whistles in terms of app control that you see elsewhere, but they cover all the basics you expect, including keepout zones, room labels, scheduling power control, and iRobot Genius, Roomba's AI that provides cleaning recommendations. In addition, they don't include a mopping attachment. Despite these factors, the S9 Plus, i7 Plus, and i3 Plus are all a significant step up in terms of cleaning power. Out of the 64 robot vacuum models we've reviewed, only four have achieved an average debris removal score of 99%, and the S9 Plus, i7 Plus, and i3 Plus are all on that list. This factor should not be understated. While other robots may provide impressive specs about suction power, when it comes to ability to actually remove debris from carpets, the Roomba cleaning system is objectively better than everything else on the market that we've tested. Before we jump to the next category, I want to highlight a very solid honorable mention with the Ecovax DBot N8 Plus Pro. This model checks a ton of boxes, including self empty dustbin, two in one design that vacuums and mops, front facing sensors, obstacle detection, and LiDAR based navigation. The front facing sensors and obstacle detection aren't quite as good as the Roborock S6 Max V, and we weren't blown away with the mopping performance. Even so, the self empty dustbin worked well, navigation was excellent, and the cleaning performance was respectable 92%. While this video is more focused on robot vacuums, I did want to briefly highlight the best robot vacuum mop combos that have impressed us over the years. First, we have the Narwhal T10. Narwhal really came out of nowhere. A modern castle viewer sent us a link to their Kickstarter, and shortly thereafter, Narwhal sent us a sample to test. In a market where everyone seems to be just trying to copy the competition, Narwhal took a massive swing in the opposite direction. Narwhal developed a two in one robot that mops and vacuums. It includes spinning mopping pads, LiDAR navigation, and a base station with a clean and dirty water tank to enable the Narwhal to clean its own mopping pads. 
I was exceedingly impressed by the mopping performance of the Narwhal. It is easily and without question the best mopping robot on the market. Navigationally, it's well ahead of most standalone robot mops driven by LiDAR navigation. In terms of cleaning power, it nails it. The Narwhal begins by wetting the mopping pads on the unit itself while still at the docking station. From there, it heads out to clean with dual spinning mopping pads. Once those pads are dirty or out of water, the Narwhal heads back to base. It cleans its own mopping pads, re-wets itself, and then heads back out to clean where it left off. At the end of a cycle, you'll find the clean water tank is empty, while the wastewater tank is full of dirty water, dirt, dust, and other debris. You then simply pour this down the drain and reset for the next mopping session. The Narwhal isn't a perfect 2-in-1 though. The app feels underdeveloped, it's pretty average when it comes to climbing and avoiding obstacles, and as a vacuum cleaner, it leaves much to be desired when cleaning carpets. In terms of vacuuming power, at best I view it as a really good sweeper, but not a replacement for your vacuum or robot vacuum. Despite the limitations, I still absolutely love the Narwhal. The Narwhal, along with the Roborock S7, are both stationed in my home as the primary cleaning robots. My home is mostly hard surface flooring, so having a dedicated robot mop makes a lot of sense. While Narwhal is expensive, if you have a home with lots of hard surface flooring, you will find it more than worth the cost. To date, of all the robot mops and 2-in-1 robot vacuum mop combos we've tested, the Narwhal is the only unit that feels like a true and complete replacement for a mop. It is an extraordinary machine and I expect the performance to only get better over time as the app is more fully developed and refined. Next, we have a few more top recommendations for robot vacuum mop combos, including the Roborock S5 Max, Roborock S6 Max V, and Roborock S7. Again, it's not enough to have a mopping attachment to be considered the best. The robot needs to offer excellent vacuuming, navigation, and usability. The Roborock S series does just that. The Roborock S5 Max, S6 Max V, and S7 all have sizable water tanks at or near 300 milliliters. They all have sizable dustbins between 460 and 470 milliliters, and they all have LiDAR-enabled navigation in addition to a fantastic and fully developed app, great navigation, and solid cleaning performance. In our vacuuming tests, the Roborock S7, S6 Max V, and S5 Max were with 96.7, 91.7, and 91.0% of debris by weight across our tests, respectively. More notably, in terms of mopping performance, you will very often see these types of mopping attachments on 2-in-1 robots. We've tested a ton of these in the last two years. Among the various brands and models we've tested, we have consistently found Roborock's version to be among the very best. The S7, S6 Max V, and S5 Max all have water flow that can be controlled via the app and 2100 square feet of mopping coverage. The S7 takes it up a notch with a sonic vibrated mopping head that can raise or lower based on floor type. When you couple the mopping and vacuum performance with excellent hardware, app usability, and navigation, it's apparent that Roborock is clearly a market leader for robot mop combo bots. These super long in-depth videos take a lot of research and time to put together. If you like this video and it's helpful to you, please give it a like and consider subscribing. It really does a lot to help our channel. Thank you. Thus far, we focus mostly on higher end and expensive models. If you need something less expensive, there are still a number of fantastic options. Let's take a look at the best budget robot vacuums on the market. Our first pick is the Roomba 675. The 675 excludes many of the bells and whistles you'll see on other robots, but where it excels is raw cleaning performance. In our tests, the 675 was able to remove 94.7% of all debris by weight, even removing 90% of debris on high power carpets. This is a fantastic cleaning score for a robot this inexpensive. Where the 675 lacks is the absence of a mopping attachment, less advanced navigation, app integration that's fairly basic and does not include mapping, and a more basic filter. Despite these limitations, it's hard to complain too much given the relative cleaning power for the price. The cleaning performance is driven through iRobot's less advanced but still high performing dual brush roll system. If you don't care for all the extra bells and whistles, or if you have a less complicated floor plan, the 675 should be more than sufficient for your needs. There are many robots within iRobot's lineup that are essentially identical to the Roomba 675. These include the Roomba 694, which is identical except for a different color faceplate, in addition to the 690 and 692. You can think of the 675, 690, 692, and 694 interchangeably when it comes to performance specs and features. Next on our budget bot picks, we have the Roborock E4. The E4 is an often overlooked robot overshadowed by the more flashy Roborock S series and others. In our tests, it was able to remove 97.3% of debris by weight. 
This is as good as the Roborock S7 and better than all other Roborock S series models we've tested by a decent margin. It comes with a 200 minute runtime, straight line navigation, and 640 milliliter dustbin. What the E4 doesn't include is digital mapping, zone cleaning, boundary markers, and a mopping attachment, though the mopping attachment can be purchased separately. Nevertheless, for the price point, it's just not worth complaining about. When it comes to raw vacuuming power, the E4 is fantastic. Much like the Roomba 675, if you have a less complex floor plan or just don't care much for the fancier navigation and app bells and whistles, then you will likely be exceedingly happy with the performance. Our last pick for the best budget robot vacuum is the Roomba E5. Like most Roomba models, the best feature is the cleaning performance. The Roomba E5 removed an average of 99.3% of all debris by weight across three floor types. This is one of four robots we've tested to date to achieve a debris removal score of 99% and it's by far the least expensive of those four. Its navigation is better than the 600 series Roomba models, but not as good as the more advanced Roomba i series. In addition, it doesn't include a mopping attachment, digital mapping, onboard camera, or recharge and resume. The Roomba E5 falls into a similar area as the Roomba 675 and Roborock E4. It's an excellent robot when it comes to cleaning, but it's missing the fancy features. For me, the Roomba E5 is the right pick if you don't care as much about the extra features, but you do want excellent carpet cleaning performance. The E5 is simply the best and least expensive robot vacuum that had nearly perfect carpet cleaning performance in our test. If that's your objective, the Roomba E5 is an easy choice. Last, I have a quick honorable mention for the Dream D9. The D9 is the most expensive of the budget robots listed here, but not by a huge margin. It performed well in our test, removing 96.0% of debris by weight. In addition, it has a mopping attachment, LiDAR, good navigation, and a well-developed app. At this point, some viewers may be wondering why we didn't mention a particular brand or model. In some cases, we simply hadn't tested or researched that model, and in other cases, we did test it, and the combination of objective data and subjective assessment resulted in less than great performance and a robot that we couldn't recommend. For this section, I want to briefly mention a few notable models and brands and why they didn't quite make our cut. First up, we have robot vacuums that removed an average of 95% of debris by weight or more. We're bringing up the list now on screen. For most of these models, while the cleaning performance was excellent, they felt lacking in terms of build quality and or navigation. Roborock's S4 Max and now discontinued S4 were very close, but I felt that Roborock's other S series models were better for not that much more money. It's a similar story with the Roomba 980 and Roomba 982 models. Many robots in the 90 to 94% average debris removal range had similar issues, primarily with build quality or navigation, or there was simply a better alternative at a similar price point. Any robots that cannot remove at least an average of 90% or higher debris by weight are easy to not recommend. A robot vacuum's first job is to clean floors, and if it cannot do that effectively, then all the additional features really don't matter. Last, let's talk about the Shark IQ. The Shark IQ is extremely popular. In terms of specs and features, the Shark IQ has a lot to offer. However, that's where the pros end for me. With respect to performance, the Shark IQ just wasn't great only removing an average of 87.3% of debris and dropping as low as 74% debris removal score on low carpet. It clogged during our test due to the small dustbin and the mapping feature has never worked for us. As a brand, I really like Shark. Their Apex and Vertex vacuums are among my favorites, but their robot vacuums leave much to be desired. We are bringing up our data summary sheet now so you can see the specific testing data for each robot we included in this video. Feel free to pause the video here if you need more time to read through it. With that said, that is it for this mega video. Do you like this longer, super in-depth format? Let us know in the comments. If you're interested in buying any of the robots we featured today, we've got links in the description. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching.